Comets are some of the most beautiful objects in our skies and a real treat when close enough and big enough that we can see them with the naked eye. Now one comet, visible south of the equator for the past two or three weeks, has just moved into the northern hemisphere, so should be visible here in the UK, weather permitting. I've come to Kielder Observatory near Hadrian's Wall on the Scottish-English border, where there's barely any light pollution. The comet I'm chasing, called oddly Comet Pan Stars, after the observatory that first spotted it, should be visible in the western sky for about half an hour as the sun sets. But it's going to be hard to see because it'll be so low in the sky, just eight degrees or so above the horizon. And it's cloudy. Gary Files is the director here, and he's been captivated by astronomy since the age of six. So Gary, show us some of the more famous comets that people might have heard of. Well, the most famous comet, I suppose, is Halley's Comet, as we can see here. We have a shot of it on the screen. Of course, Halley's Comet is one of the first comets to really be recorded in history, appeared on the Bayer Tapestry, for instance. It's got a period of around about 76 years, so it's due back in 2061. So I doubt there'll be many people around to see this. I mean, I'm, I'm hoping I'm still around to see, but maybe not. And of course we had um, Comet Shoemaker Levy 9 that people may remember because this was a really important scientific event. Because in July 1994, Shoemaker Levy 9 actually fell way too close to the gravitational field of the giant planet Jupiter. And the effect that that had was it actually pulled the comet into about 22 little fragments. But those fragments weren't that little because they all impacted the surface of Jupiter and left a big old stain on the surface of Amazing, Jupiter. Amazing, that, that trail. Yes, yeah, beautiful. That and then, of course, we have um, one of the most famous recent comets was Hale-Bopp, which appeared in our skies in 1994-1995. It's actually stayed in, the, stayed in the sky for 18 months. Comets are very different, and we can never really tell. I mean, Hale-Bopp, for instance, and Halley's Comet, they've been around the sun a couple of times, so we know what they're made out of, and we know which way they're going to behave when they come back out of orbiting the sun, right? But this one's a little bit different. We've not seen him before. He's not been here before. This is his first visit. And we won't see him again either, not in our lifetimes. But we're very hopeful that once he's came out of the back of the sun, which it's done now, um, that the amount of gas and dust it releases is going to start reflecting a lot of sunlight. So we should be able to easily see it. Asteroids and comets are objects within our solar system. Asteroids are made of rock or metal. Comets are made of ice, rock and organic compounds and are believed to have formed in the cold outer solar system, in the Oort cloud, a massive sphere of ice and rock that surrounds the solar system. Scientists believe both asteroids and comets are ancient remnants of the time when our solar system first formed, over four billion years ago. Some asteroids are so small they can come out of the blue. That's what happened last month in Russia, where a small asteroid terrified the residents of Chelyabinsk. Dr Nigel Metcalf is on the team of scientists that oversees the PanStars project, the Panchromatic Survey Telescope and Rapid Response System, the telescope in Hawaii set up to find near-Earth objects like the comet that now bears its name. So when they come in to, near to the sun in the solar system, they heat up, and this evaporates the gas and dust and the snow, the icy snowballs all melt. And what happens is the solar wind, which is a stream of particles coming out from the sun, cause all this dust and gas to get shot out behind the comet. So the tail always points away from the direction of the sun. So even when the comet is coming away from the sun again, the tail will be pointing away as well. So it will be moving into its own tail. So where has this comet come from? So PanStars first discovered the comet when it was out beyond the orbit of the planet Jupiter, and about a million times fainter than it is now. And it's been coming in ever since then. And it's coming in on a slightly unusual uh, trajectory because it's coming in at right angles to the plane of the solar system, which all the planets circling. In fact, it's coming from the south as it happens, and it's going away up to the north. Uh, last weekend, it reached the closest approach that it's going to get to the sun and to the Earth, a distance of about 100 million miles. Uh, and from now on, it's going to be gradually moving away from us. And the next week or so will be your best opportunity, in fact, to see it with the naked eye. Then later this year, there's the promise of a second spectacular comet. 
towards end of November 2013, we get Comet Ice on. Now, Comet Ice on special. We're getting really excited about this one. And if it comes off, when this one loops around the sun and comes back out, the, the, the sheer size of it, it's going to be releasing a lot of material. And this one could be the comet that everybody's saying it may be the once in a civilization event. Just after sunset, and it's still cloudy in Kielder. So there are some tantalisingly clear patches, but it's just too cloudy to see the comet. Though some people in the Northern Hemisphere have been lucky enough to catch a glimpse of it. This shot's from Santa Monica and this one from Phoenix, Arizona. For a few nights now, the comet will be sitting very close to the sun in the sky. If you do want to try to see it for yourself, it's best to look just after sunset to avoid damaging your eyes. After all, this is truly a once in a lifetime event. It looks like this comet's not coming back for millions of years, if at all.